Hello everybody, welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Lana. Okay, so we um, a couple months ago we did a video about the Lake Mead and mm -hmm. the water supply. Right. And we uh, just read an article that came out in the Las Vegas Re Review Journal. And it turns out we actually have a lot of reserve water, not counting what's in the lake. Right. Um, Southern Nevada has eight years of water reserves as state faces water cuts from Colorado River. Now, the actual numbers on this are staggering. The actual number, the amount of water that we have. Right, I mean, I can't even, um, I, I saw the numbers and I, I can't conceptualize those numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna read the numbers. This is from, uh, we got this from the Ruby Journal. In the years since the program began, the water district and city of North Las Vegas collectively have stored more than 360,000 acre feet of water for community's use in times of need. So that's 360,000 acres a foot deep, mm -hmm. okay? That equates to roughly 117 billion gallons of water. That's a lot of water. And we don't need that much, no, right? Th those are numbers that only Congress can spend. Okay, <laughs> so you're probably saying, well, but it's only eight years, that means we're gonna run out in eight years. Actually, that's not true. Actually, that's reserves that we may never have to touch. We hope. We hope. Um, so how did we end up with this extra water? Like, how do we just store extra water? So um, the thing to keep in mind about Southern Nevada is that we probably lead the nation in conservation as far as water is concerned. Uh, we, uh, we reclaim about 99% of all indoor used water. So that means that the water that is used outdoors for irrigation, for entertainment, is not reclaimed, but the water indoors, so your laundry, flushing the toilet, brushing your teeth, all of that, that water is reclaimed. So what happens is when we reclaim that water, uh, some of it ends up back in Lake Mead and some of it we actually squirrel away. We have this big uh, underwater aquifer and that's where we store our water. Okay, so uh, talk to somebody at the water district. Uh, Max says Southern Nevada has water reserves because it doesn't use its yearly amount of allocated water. Just like you said, he credits that to those conservation policies over the years. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, here's another quote from the article. Max says in 2002, when the drought was declared, Southern Nevadans used 211 gallons of water per person per day. That figure has been cut dramatically to 110 gallons per day as Southern Nevada's population has exploded. Max says the goal is to reduce that amount to 86 gallons per person per, per day by 2035. Juana, how did we just magically conserve water? Are people just drinking less, taking shorter showers? Where does that come from? So it comes in a lot of ways. So first of all, uh, we have uh, put into place policies that limit outdoor water use. So for okay. example, uh, new home construction can't have uh, lawns. Yes. Okay, so so we, we've gotten rid of lawns for new home construction. If you have an existing lawn, then they will, then the uh, this water district will actually pay you to take out your existing lawn. Uh, if you have a pool, they'll pay you to fill in your pool. So we've got conservation efforts that way. And of course, uh, indoor water use has also diminished because we all have uh, low flow toilets, low flow showers and, and all that sort of thing. Plus, because we pay for water, uh, as far as our usage goes, by as much as we use, we all are very mindful of that. And so we make sure that we don't have running toilets and we don't have drippy faucets uh, because it gets very expensive very quickly. Um, I've seen that at our own house. You know, if I get a water bill and all of a sudden it's a hundred dollars more than I was expecting, you know, I am forever hunting everywhere going, where is the water leak? Because I know how much water we use and this extra hundred dollars, that doesn't make any sense. And invariably, I do find a water leak. Sometimes it's something simple like uh, a running toilet. Sometimes it's multiple irrigation leaks, whatever it is. And then it gets taken care of very quickly because taking care of the irrigation leak uh, number one, it's the right thing to do. Number two, it's it's fiscally responsible because it costs money to have that water uh, keep going when we pay by the amount of water that we actually use. Uh, Max says a 50-year water resource plan developed by the Southern Nevada Water Authority considers different scenarios, including climate change and water demand, 
When it comes to our water supply, he says there are some scenarios where we might have to dip in to the reserves in the next couple of decades. Mm -hmm. So we might have to dip into our reserves in the next couple of decades. However, he says other scenarios indicate we might not have to dip into reserves. So we might we may go 50 more years and never touch those reserves. It's very so possible. So what does that say about running out? Because that's what everyone said. Oh, you're going to run out of water. Because all they do is they see the lake, they see the lake down lower, and they go, oh, you're going you're gonna to run out of water. So one of the things that's going to have to happen is, look, we have a compact uh, between several states regarding the use of the, of the water in the Colorado River. Mm -hmm. And that compact is... Um, from before any of us were born. <laughs> yeah. And so that may have to be to get redressed because Nevada, the Southern Nevada simply did not have the population at the time that the compact was drawn up. Not only that, but the compact was drawn up based on uh, precipitation for the previous uh, few years, which happened to have been some of the wettest years on history. So all of that has to kind of be revisited and redone. So once that's redone, then I think some of the allotment is going to change all the way around. I think maybe other communities might decide to be um, more conservationist the way Southern Nevada is. Look, we live in Southern Nevada and we conserve a lot. And then we go to other areas that are also on the Colorado River and we see literally water just running out and it, it just completely bothers us because we know how how important conservation is yeah. uh, is for us. So it would be nice if uh, other people using the Colorado River for water would also conserve at similar levels to the way we do. Okay, so let's, worst case scenario, Lake Mead gets down to the point where it can't go downstream. Mm -hmm. So what two big factors happen if water can't go downstream? Well, um, people downstream aren't getting any water. Okay, <laughs> so downstream, 75% of the water that goes downstream from here is used for farming. Right, and that's really problematic because, uh, look, that is an area that we all get our food from, whether you're here in Nevada or in California. You know, if you're really anywhere in the western U.S., some of your food comes from there. And, of course, that, that food also goes to other parts of the country, but primarily the western U.S., this is where we get most of our, our fresh food. Okay, what other resource does the dam produce as water goes through it and goes downstream. So the other resource, of course, electricity. Now we know that uh, everybody has uh, learned the benefits of um, solar power and wind turbines, and, and that's helping. But Hoover Dam still provides the majority of electricity for a lot of communities, so that, that would be a huge hardship. Yeah, so um, right now it's at 75% capacity. Mm -hmm. It only produces 75% of its max capacity. Uh, this also affects California because they get a, you know, if you ever drive around the dam, you see all these massive high tension lines going into California because mm -hmm. they, they provide California and Arizona with power and water. The people who are likely to be hit the most would be farmers downstream in California, Arizona, and Mexico, not New Mexico, Mexico, anyone getting power, uh, power rates would probably go up if the dam went down. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, the conservation plan, because they've limited people, is to stop that from happening. So basically what I've said is, you're going to get less water, 12% less water, figure it out. Mm -hmm. So water prices will probably go up, mm -hmm. but we're not going to run out of water. So this idea that we will run out of wa drinking water, not have water. Um, the other thing that NV Energy is doing is massively trying to build a solar infrastructure. Mm -hmm. There are solar they're solar going up literally as fast as they can get their hands on anything that could produce electricity. Right. Yeah, and remember solar is, is good for, for us because we live in, in the Mojave Desert, so it's sunny most of the time, so we are able to uh, maximize the use of solar. And we do have a lot of land around us, uh, and so they are able to either purchase or have long-term leases on, on the mm -hmm. land for the solar. So there are a lot of uh, a lot of ways that we can get solar that way. Of course, lots of people are putting solar on their roofs, uh, and especially with battery technology increasing and with solar panels uh, being more productive, that's helping too. So there are a lot of things going on to help mitigate the less power that's being produced from Hoover Dam. Um, if you're worried about water supply and you think like, the, the lake is going to run out, then don't move anywhere to the southwest because it it's not just Las Vegas. I know we're close to it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that we actually, there's a third intake in the lake and it's our intake. It's the bottom intake. 
even if the lake goes down to where it can't go downstream, we can still pull out our allocated water mm -hmm. and our saved water. We can just suck it right out of the lake. Right. So we can we have we will have water long before anybody else. Like we'll be literally the last people taking water out of the lake. Right. Now, of course, that's a it's not a highly likely scenario that we've been in a drought now for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't know if this would be a 20 year drought, a 50 year drought or it'll, it'll end you know, next year and the lake will start going up. But it's been a long time since the lake was this slow, probably 80 years, I think. Right. It's been a long time. So, you know, keep in mind, for those of you that say, well, but you've got water from Lake Powell. Remember, Lake Powell actually flow, the water from, from Lake Powell is released and then that goes into Lake Mead. So Lake Powell is actually upstream for, from us. And the reason I bring that up is because somebody was talking to us about that uh, recently and they were under the impression that Lake, that Lake Powell was below us. No, they're above us. Yeah, and Lake Powell, that most of that water ends up in Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and then we get more too mm -hmm. from it because it ends up in Lake Mead. Right. But it's the way the compact is, is it's for the whole basin. Mm -hmm. The North Basin, which is Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Utah. Mm -hmm. And then the South Basin, which is also some Colorado. And then Arizona, New Mexico, California, Nevada, and Mexico. Mm -hmm. And what's not included in all this is actually 10% of all of the water that we pull for local use is actually just pulled out of the ground out of wells mm -hmm. and and people don't realize it they think we get all our water from the colorado and we don't so we're actually there's a plan um i don't know if you know what it's going to look like in five years 10 years or 50 years but i do not believe that i have been hearing far too long about how we're going to run out of water and we haven't run out of water i should we should have got a big thing of water and put it here <laughs> the whole time well, so we do hope that we don't run out of water. We, so we're not, we're not uh, hopeful for that. We are hoping that we will continue to have uh, conservation efforts, both here in Southern Nevada and throughout the, um, the use of the Colorado River, everybody up and down the river. We hope that they can serve so we can all have good, happy, wet lives. Uh, we hope that the drought ends sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. uh, we do need lots of snow up in the Rockies because that's, that snow melt is what uh, feeds the Colorado River. Yep. So, um, but anyway, we want to do the video because most people didn't realize how much actual reserves we have. And this is over and above what's in Lake Mead and what we get out of the basin. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of water. We actually, we, we're pretty good. Everybody else is, is much worse than us. Right. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't conserve. Please conserve no matter where you are up and down at the Colorado River Basin. Uh, please conserve because it helps all of us. One of the things they did talk about were farmers switching crops to yes. stuff that uses less water. Right. So, but you're seeing that. Uh, and so if you look at California, they're taking out almond trees as much as I love almonds. Uh, they're taking out almond trees because they are very water intensive okay. uh, and they're replacing them with other trees uh, that are less water intensive. And that's going to happen with trees. It's going to happen with uh, other crops as well, uh, which is a good thing. Good. Cause I don't like almonds. <laughs> they, they should make, do more like avocados or other okay. grow other things that are taste better. That will be okay. Um, so if you made it to the end of the video, thanks. Please subscribe to the notification bell, uh, share the video and leave us a comment. Yes. Please like the video, uh, and leave us comments. Tell us what you think. Uh, tell us what other crops maybe they're replacing in all, all along the Colorado river that are maybe less water intensive because we'd be interested in learning about that too. Yep. All right. Um, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.